All right, peace and love, y'all. <laughs> My video cut off, so I'm back. But yeah, so I was inspired to hop on here during the Mars hour. We are currently in the Mars hour in Atlanta. Um, what am I talking about? Well, each hour, each day is ruled by a planet. Each hour is moved, ruled by a planet. And so in my efforts to live intentionally, I pay attention to what what planet is ruling the day. And so what's in alignment with that energy. And also sometimes I'll look at the... I'll um, do certain things in certain hours. Like, for instance, if I'm wanting to have a conversation about a contract or money or real estate or something specific, there's sometimes a certain hour, depending upon, you know, what uh, the ruling planet, there's sometimes a good hour to do that. And it's according to each day and you can keep up with it. By the way, take notes. You can keep up with it on an app. The app that I like to use is called Hora Watch. H-O-R-A-W-A-T-C-H. Hora Watch. And so I use that app to keep up with the hour of the day. The hours of the day. And so we're in the Mars hour. I wanted to hop on live I'm not talking about anything specific. I said, I'm going to just hop on and just kind of talk about what's been on my mind. Um, what I'm focusing on right now with my spiritual development and my personal development. Um, and just share my journey. You know, one of the ways that I serve is as a coach. And, you know, the coaching that I do, it can be called so many different things. But I ran across this title that I resonated with just recently called um, Holistic Lifestyle Coaching. And I said, okay, I like that. You know, Holistic Lifestyle Coaching because ultimately, you know, um, I have been led to strive to live a holistically well life, a holistically rich life. And that involves a lot, you know. <laughs> it's not just like, Physical wellness is like to be holistically well is to address your spiritual, emotional and physical wellness. And like also and and knowing that with that trinity, you're able to um, really thrive as a divine being. And so that is my goal personally. So I've learned a lot on my journey. One second. Let me grab my tea. So I've learned a lot on my journey um, and I, I, the coaching that I do is a mixture between sharing my own lived experience and um, professional coaching skills and techniques that I've picked up over the years because I do um, serve as a professional coach, meaning I have had some training, I have um, done a level of uh, study in regards to the the um, skill and the service of coaching. And so I'm coming with, with both. My lived experience, you know, what I have learned as far as, you know, the um, skill of coaching. And then also just like spiritual principles. That's also a part two. But anyway, so I was like, okay, so what I'm a chair. <laughs> so I thought about, okay, I'll share... Um, Kind of the three areas that I focus on in general with uh, my members as well as just on my platform in general. So I'll start with like physical wellness. Right now, I have been really focusing on lymph system health. So I'll talk a little bit about lymph system health, lymph lymphatic system health and why that's important. You know, I can talk a little bit about that. So, you know, I'm not, a, you know, a doctor or, you know, anything like that. It's just things I've learned over the years because I have decided to live a naturopathic experience in this life or a natural life. I've had to learn about my body and I've had to learn about how to heal my own body because I do not subscribe to 
Western medicine. So I've just had to learn. So what I'm sharing with you is just things that I have learned. I won't say that it'll be all encompassing, but this is what I have learned. And let me say this before I get started um, on that lymphatic system that when you are desiring to transform your life and really um, live a life of, and do that from a natural standpoint, it is essential for you to commit to growing your knowledge about the body, growing your knowledge about Mama Earth and how Mama Earth helps heal us. It is going to be up to you to commit to having faith in natural medicine, in the herbs, in the because for the most part, how I treat myself, which I'm always treating myself because we're always like every day our body is is uh, recalibrating and healing. So I'm always giving my body things that it needs to become whole, to heal, to do those type of things. So for the most part, what I use is food as medicine, herbs, um, the breath. Um, I address the energy points in my body and um, roots, you know, so the, the leaf of the plant, the herbs, the fruit of the plants the roots of the plants, clays, you know, um, barks, um, um, different healing waters of the earth. So these are the things, this, this is the medicine, you know? And so you have to be committed to having faith in it. Cause I'll tell you now, you know, someone can give you an herb or a root or something that has been proven to work for so many people, but it won't, but it, you find yourself not really having a lot of success with it because you are not faithful with it and you are not having faith in it. And that plays a part. That really plays a part. And so oftentimes when you go on that kind of journey of healing yourself and you're doing it in a natural standpoint, a lot of people, even though way more people subscribe to naturopathic medicine these days, Still, it is the case that a lot of people um, do not believe in natural medicine. And so you just got to be committed to like, I have faith in this natural medicine that it is healing my body and you have to stay consistent with it, stay with it. So that's my, my tidbit on, you know, living the natural life. And I really um, encourage you, if you're hearing this and this is resonating with you, um, stick with it like go for it it's i i really i don't know how else like i will really want to live besides living this natural life and like indulging in natural foods and natural medicines and living waters and living foods because it's so many benefits to it a whole lot of energy you know skin is lit it's beautiful um the body feels great you know uh it's been so many changes you know it's like the fountain of youth too. So, you know, it's like you, you also age backwards too, you know? So I feel good, <laughs> you know, my body feels good. My mind feels strong. I feel strong. And I know it's because I indulge in the living foods, living waters, natural ways of living. All right. So lymph system. So here's the thing, knowing about the systems of the body is very important. I'm focusing on the lymph system because it is a system that detoxes it rids the toxins out of the body. And so when our lymph system is not healthy, then it your body is holding on to toxins. And those toxins can wreak havoc, you know. Um, you can begin to deal with inflammation and pain. And, um, you know, you may begin to develop cysts or tumors or different things like that. So you want your systems that detox to be healthy. And so with the lymph system, what I've been doing lately, I pulled out my trampoline, my little miniature trampoline that I have in the house. Um, and I, I am jumping when I'm, when I don't go for a run in the morning, which is really good for the lymph system, just movement in general, but specifically jumping jacks, running, anything that kind of gets your body to do a kind of a wiggle or jerking move is really good for the lymph system. So that trampoline is really good because you're jumping and if you move your body around and shake it, it really helps out with that. Another thing that I have been doing um, for a while now, for, for quite some time now, 
now is when I get out the shower and I begin to lotion up my body, I focus a little massage on the cyst, the parts of my body that have the lymph, you know, the lymph noise. And so I'll rub a little extra, you know, once I put the lotion on or oil on, I rub a little extra here. I rub a little extra on like what, where my hip area is, uh, right, right underneath my bosom, different areas on my neck, you know, every place where I know there's a cluster of lymph noise, I'll do some little extra massaging. And while I'm doing that, and while I'm um, doing anything in regards to like supporting my body in its wellness and in its healing, I'm also speaking affirmative words. You know, I'm not thinking like, oh God, Lord, please let my lymph nodes work. You know, <laughs> I'm like giving thanks to my body, like giving thanks for the divine intelligence of my body, giving thanks for the lymph system that knows what to do to release all of the, the uh, to release all the toxins out of my body. Giving thanks for my awareness about my body. Thank you, body. Thank you, lymph system. Thank you, uh, pores. Thank you, everything. Thank you, kidney. Thank you, liver. Thank you, um, intestines. Thank you, you know, thank you, body, for doing everything, for already having everything you need in order for me to be well. And so while I'm doing that, I do those type of things. I do those affirmations. So that's really kind of what I'm focusing on for the lymph system. I have a tincture that I use as well as a tea that I use um, as far as like ingesting anything for the lymph system. I'm doing that. And so uh, I do my, I'm doing my trampoline. I usually go for a, a jog or a run daily anyway. Um, so that really helps. And getting a sweat in is really good too. Going to a sauna, stuff like that. All of that is really good for the lymph system. Um, but I did pull out that trampoline recently. And so I've been doing the trampoline a little bit more. So yeah, just focusing a little bit on lymph system. So hey, if you haven't, maybe it's been a minute since you revisited your systems in the body. Look up, you know, lymph system, lymph noise. Learn more about your lymph system. Learn how to make sure they're healthy because it's really important for us to, first of all, know the body. And the only way you can really be a co-creator in this process of wellness is for you to know the body. So know what you're doing. Um, now, when it comes to eating, you know, I just have some things that I just try to stay away from, you know, um, that I can't say just directly impact the lymph system, but as far as eating go, um, jump rope is excellent. Jump rope is excellent too. Anything with like jumping motions, running, anything to get your body kind of moving, jerking, you know, wiggling, you know, you can even wiggle or shake and just do that for some time. That's good too. Um, but as far as eating go, I just, I'm always focusing on, um, bringing down inflammation. That's, that's, that's where I'm focused. And that's changed over the years because um, for many years, I just focused on, you know, weight management, which is, you know, looking at the fat content, the carb content, the calories. And so since I, but that's because I had a, a, a large chunk of my life, I was on a weight loss journey, you know, trying to release weight because um, for much of my life, I've been what people would consider to be overweight. And not only what people would consider to be overweight, but I've been, I haven't been happy with my weight. So for a long time, I was just back and forth with that journey. So grateful that's kind of behind me. You know, I've, I've released the amount of weight that I really want to release, the amount of pounds that I really want to release. And also not just physical weight, but the emotional weight. I've gotten a, a level of balance when it comes to like, the emotion, so the emotional eating has decreased and all of those different type of things. And I've created a lifestyle where um, I'm not having to strive so much around the weight management. And so I'm grateful because now my eating is more for health, you know? And so I'm more so focused on bringing down inflammation, alkaline in the body, uh, minerals, giving the body the minerals that it needs. And so um, did have I broken my fast yet? I broke my fast today, but it was with a liquid. I broke it already. Yeah, I drank a kombucha. But um these are the type of things I eat pretty regularly. <laughs> so right now, the way my liberty plan is set up, I'm mostly eating fruits and um drinking fresh pressed juice. 
uh, drinking smoothies and eating salads. That's really the most part. I'll add in something here and there, but that's pretty much my liberty plan right now. You know, coming from going raw for like a full year to incorporating some cooked foods, but for the most part, my body likes fruits, veggies, you know, juices, waters, teas. That's what my body has responded to in a very good way. Um, and I know that because I'm able to manage my weight. My energy levels are high. I can feel, you know, I feel, I just feel, it's just, you can feel it. You can feel it when the body is happy. So my body is happy with that. By the way, this is a papaya. I usually keep these seeds to put in smoothies because it's really good for um, colon cleansing, you know, health, colon health. And so uh, that's, uh, I'm going to probably, I have a lot of them though. I may not, um, I may not keep these. I might just ingest um, some of them and then just um, compost the rest of them. All right. So I'm going to pause for the cause because I wanted to let you all know, um, I am, in case you haven't heard, I have the opportunity to own the property that I am currently functioning out of as OU Ministries. And OU Ministry has, Ministries has the opportunity to have a permanent home at the location where I am now. I do have a fundraising campaign going on, a GoFundMe campaign. If you have been inspired at all by your girl or have benefited from OU Ministries or anything that I've offered over the years, Please do show your support. That link is in the bio. It all dime, every dime counts. Everything counts. Please go to the link in bio and give um, whenever you feel compelled to do so. All right, I appreciate that. All right, so okay, that's as far as my wellness go. Um, what am I reading right now? Let me share what I'm reading right now. I'm always reading something. <laughs> this is like one of the like three books that I'm reading right now, but hey, I I get them all finished at some point. But The Way of a Pilgrim, really enjoying it, really, really enjoying it. I was inspired to purchase this book from a book that I was reading called The Prayer of the Heart, I think it's called. And it's a book, um, it's a book about Christian mysticism and Sufi mysticism in regards to prayer. Really nice book. I like the way the author really compared, not compared, but like um, showed how, showed the similarities in both systems, the Christian mystic system, the Christian mystic system and the Sufi mystic system. And um, the author talked a lot about the prayer of the heart, you know, Loved it. It was a great book. It mentioned this book a couple of times. And so I picked this book up. Very nice. Like it's been translated. It's from, um, it's a Russian publication, but they trans somewhat, it's been translated by a few people. You can find it mostly in like a lot of the religion or Christianity, um, um, like coursework. It's a part of a lot of courseworks, but I'm enjoying it. What I'm mostly enjoying it about what I'm mostly enjoying about this book is first of all, it's a simple read, but it's focusing on the notion. Y'all know I teach from the Bible in OU Ministries. I teach the Bible from a metaphysical standpoint. And so we dig into the Bible. We talk about the real meaning of the Bible. Because first of all, don't throw the baby away with the bathwater, okay? I know Christianity, Christian, church, all that stuff has left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. But the truth of the matter is, if you know how to read the Bible, it is very um, a, a very um, good book of wisdom to teach you how to really live as a divine being. But you do have to know how to read it, you know. And it's I have been called to, um, I have a... I have a deep desire, a passion, so I'm call I'm I'm perceiving it as a calling to share what I have learned about how to read the Bible. Um for real, for real, because it's so rich and it's so good. Like and I'm grateful for the teachers I've had, which I've had Sufi teachers, I've had Christian teachers, I've had Ifa teachers, you know, from I've had teachers in my journey, still do, not just had, but still have teachers on my journey from various faiths from various uh, spiritual systems. You know, I have studied under um, 
Ianifas and Babalaos. I've studied under under uh, sheikhs. I've studied under um, uh, ministers, you know, and still have those people in my life. And all, all of them, the Babalaos, the Ianifas, the, the, the imams, the sheikhs, the, the uh, ministers, the elders that I know, all of them have said the same thing at some point to me, which is don't throw the baby water with the bath. Don't throw the baby away with the bath water when it comes to the Bible, because it is a rich text when you know how to read. And I'm so grateful that I've had people to say that to me in my life because, um, wow, you know, <laughs> once I learned how to read it, I was like, what? Like, man, we're so undereducated, miseducated, misguided, <laughs> like when it comes to religion, when it comes to wisdom books, when it comes to wisdom texts. And I feel like, you know, that's the greatest setup. That's the grand, that's the grand setup. It's like, you know, um, use, use religion against, use religion against you, then, you know, um, uh, brainwash you with uh, a falsehood when it comes to religion and wisdom books, then tell the story about that so that, you know, tell the story about the religion or the wisdom book being used to oppress you and then leave you totally hanging trying to figure out the way. Like, that's the good, like, you know, so it's like, Handing it down, handing this wisdom book we call the Bible down in a way that's oppressive, it wreaking havoc in the way that just is bound to happen when falsehoods are taught. Then tell the story about that. So now anyone who maybe wake up a bit can will say, oh, no, that was used to oppress us. I don't want nothing to do with it no more. So now you're left. You've denounced the Bible. You've denounced religions that you've been taught because you've seen the havoc that it has that has been wreaked on maybe your family or whoever in your life because of the way it's been taught or the way it's been been um, perpetuated. And so now here you are as a seeker feeling lost, feeling like you don't know your way and kind of scrambling, trying to go over here seek out these other systems, these other spiritual systems and religions that you really don't know nothing about. You don't know the language. You don't know the custom. You don't know, you know. And so for me, I think one of the jewels that I took away from one of my teachers and they said that, um, that they said to me, they said, listen, either way it go, you're going to have to seek. You're going to have to study to show that self-approved. If you try to go outside of the system that you grew up in or the religion that you grew up in or the language that you know or any of those type of things, you're really just adding more resistance. There is no need for you to move too far away from what you already have in your life. And at that point, they was talking to me about Christianity and the Bible. And so take that, what you, what your ancestors followed, what well, all of your people down your bloodline that you know of and, and you know, even more, um, have carried with them all these years and put a level of energy behind and put a level of, of study behind and has used. And so it has a connection with you. And then go from there, stand on their shoulders and learn, you know, learn it for yourself get to know it for yourself. So I'm so grateful for that guidance on my journey to, to, um, be still, you know, <laughs> and, and, and let it grow from where I was. And so anywho, so this book that I'm reading the way of, of a pilgrim, the main character came across the scripture that talked about incessant prayer. And, you know, when I read the Bible, or anything that's a book of wisdom, I'm paying attention to the formulas or the instructions in it. That's really what I'm praying. I'm paying attention to just how I think, because I'm always intrigued by the way, you know, the how, the why. It's very intriguing to me. But if I'm opening up the Bible or wisdom book, I'm definitely seeking some guidance. And so when when you 
when when I have opened up the Bible or other text, it points to prayer a lot as the way. It's only it's only a few things, you know, prayer, praise, meditation, you know, positivity. These are the kind of the formulas or the ways to stay in alignment with your divinity, to be able to raise your consciousness at a level where you can experience a heavenly existence, you know, um, the way to really be able to surrender so you're not living a hellish experience. Um, And so many times when I'm looking at scripture, I was studying Psalms, still studying Psalms. I'm, I'm hopping around to John and Matthew as well. But it gives you, it tells you what will um, help you to surrender, to be able to lighten your heart, um, remember your divinity, align with it, get to know the creator or God, um, and be able to um, really live this life as a divine being. And this is such a beautiful experience to live your life as a divine being. And so one of the scriptures talk about incessant prayer, peace, peace, incessant prayer. And the main character of this book is seeking to learn how does one accomplish this incessant prayer? How does one accomplish this? Since this is something that um, is said in the word to be a way, you know, the way of, of, of God, the way of the child children of God is to be one of incessant prayer. Um, and so it's a whole story about this peasant who is, is walking the land as a pilgrim and, um, he's running into all of these wise elders and they're giving their insight on it. And the story builds up. It's almost like, a, a depiction of a evolution journey. Um, it's a story of, um, the unfolding of, um, understanding. So I love stories. I love, you know, I love, uh, reading about and thinking about and meditating on, um, God. So it's just, I like it. I'm still in the middle of it. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm digging it. So I guess what I'm taking away from it so far, some of the revelations that I have taken away from it is that, um, God, it's, it's so, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot is that I'm realizing that I feel like when we have tough times, this is one of the revelations that really stick out to me for this, from this book that is just, you know, I think about it. I feel like when we have a tough time in life, we feel like we are doing something wrong or that we have um, fallen short or something like we have this notion. And I feel like that definitely is a conditioning from Christian living, from uh, church living and Christian living, uh, Christian living in a way that it has been perpetuated um, over some time now. So you feel like when you start to have these trials in life or these um, challenges which um, I say one of the members of Oyun said that they stopped using the word challenge and they started using the word opportunity of growth, opportunity. So when we start having these opportunities of growth, I think our mindset maybe go to what am I doing wrong? Or you're trying to be quick to move away from the pain or move away from the plight. I don't know. But I think from reading this book, one of the things that I, you know, that I contemplated on and I said, you know, in those times, these are times that we learn. These are opportunities for us to really get to know God. This is the opportunity for us to really stretch our faith. This is the opportunity for us to really practice our divinity, you know, and until we're able to surrender to that and and be okay with going through, you know, and, you know, doing what we need to do in order to overcome, which is, you know, stay positive, breathe, pray, you know, do those type of things. As long as we do those type of things, we will experience more overcoming. And so... 
these times won't be so difficult for us. Not only that, but it's a part of the journey. It's not that you necessarily did anything wrong or you fallen short. <laughs> it's just a part of the journey. You know, it's like, is it the case that you we do, you know, fall into temptation to doubt and fear and stress and all of those different type of things? Yes, but that still is a part of the journey. So it's not like, you know, we should look at it like, I'll be glad when I get away from that. Or I'll be glad when I don't doubt no more. Or, I'll be glad when I don't fear no more. I understand that, you know, it's like we'll grow. So the the doubt or the fear or the worry or the stress or the anger, all of those different sinful or evil <laughs> type things that we, that we as uh, human beings or, you know, in this physical experience, experience, we just won't give over to it. It won't be something that will captivate us. You know, we won't be uh, captivated by anger. You know, we know once you really start to develop, you may experience it, but it's just an opportunity for you to speak truth about God or for you to grow your faith or for you to really see yourself and understand yourself and continue to refine. And so I think that's one of the, I, I, I pray what I'm saying is clear. It's more the revelation, I think one of them, because I've, I've gained like maybe three or four deep revelations from this book. But one of them for sure is, you know, appreciate the whole journey. All of it is a part of it. You know, um, I think we are so heavy in our culture on like self-development, self-improvement, all of those type of things. And I think because we have been um, programmed under a Christian type, um, a Western Christian, or I don't even know what to call it. It's like a... <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. It's not really the real Christ, like, you know, Christ living <laughs> Christianity and how it has been portrayed and how it's been pep perpetuated has definitely not been the walk of Christ. Not at all. You know, it's been tainted a lot. Thank you for the badge. Thank you for the support. Um, I, I think because of the Western world being that type of Christian programming, the self-development that we attempt to do is still heavy on the ego. And it's still punitive and, you know, like, my I know my weaknesses. I know I ain't perfect. Um, you know, those type of vibes. Like, you are perfectly made. We have no weaknesses. We have opportunities of growth. We have, you know, these unique parts of us in life that is is a part of our path and our growth journey that we all deal with. And a lot of times I help people to see those things by sh by helping them to understand their natal chart. Like you just come with certain things, but you know, you can look at it as a negative, but all of it is good and all of it is God. And so really, you know, it's for you to be okay with that. And then raise your vibration, raise your consciousness so that every part of you is a reflection, it is being reflected from a mm, higher standpoint. And so, yeah, one of the big revelations from this book is, is certainly like on your path in your journey, you know, when you start to feel struggles and, you know, you start to experience these challenges in life. You know, don't go hard on yourself. Don't, you know, it's for us to continue to grow and develop and evolve and all of that. But do it from a place of knowing that you are divinely made, you know, divinely made. And so everything that you need is you already have It's with you. And so know that and don't feel like you got to go find something or you have to correct something within you, it's more of 
focus on becoming more enlightened about you and how you're thinking and why you think in a certain type of way and how maybe another way you can think and you know those type of things instead of going so hard on yourself so i don't know i'm trying to explain something uh, to, that could be difficult to explain so i hope it's clear so yeah so um hmm i'm open for questions by the way again i'm gonna plug it again I am grateful to have an amazing opportunity to have a permanent home for OU Ministries here in Atlanta, East Point, Georgia. Um, it's a one acre, a little bit over an acre uh, garden um, with a building that we are currently functioning as a headquarters from. Uh, it's a beautiful space. If you haven't been out, you should. If you're in Atlanta, you should come out. Um, but I have an opportunity to purchase it and I have a GoFundMe uh, campaign that I've developed to solicit support of that. Very, very close to my goal. Very, very close to my goal. Um, we are now raising about $54,000. We, we're about $54,000 away from our goal of being able to um, own the property. And so I'm asking if you've ever been impacted by anything that I have offered, meditation, a word, um, an event, if you've ever experienced any of the services, the coaching, the clearings, the readings, the any of those things over the years. I've been at this since about 2015. <laughs> so over the years, if you've ever tuned into a live, if you've ever got hopped on a meditation, if you ever uh, got a hug from me that you loved, if you ever saw a video of me making some juice or talking about some wellness, or if you've ever, ever, ever been impacted by my, by me or the ministry in any way, shape, or form, please go over to the link in bio and give to the GoFundMe campaign. You know, um, this experience of purchasing this property has been something, boy. It has been something. First of all, I'm doing it in a huge upheaval of the financial system <laughs> right now. <laughs> so nothing is the same, you know. Nothing. It's just like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting atmosphere when it comes to the finances, just in general, right? I'm also doing it during a Mars retrograde. I'm also doing it and and I you know I'm doing I'm following the will of God so it's you know it is what it is but um that's okay I'm staying the course and I'm just following the guidance of the almighty in order to make this thing happen but um you know this opportunity is grand this property has been in the community for over 17 years as a green space um, it has been a garden for over 17 years. It has provided natural and organic foods. It has pr provided a beautiful place for us to gather and um, have beautiful events. In 2020, it was the location to be, you know, while everybody was telling us we got to stay inside. We had the almost two acre property, which by the way, I'm saying a little bit over one acre. That's how much I am purchasing. But it's almost two acres if we include the parking lot and the back area and all of that. But we had that property for people to come out and uh, and um, physical distance, but we said continue to socialize. And we was really front running in having that type of location here in Atlanta. And a lot of people came out and 2020 was, um, it was beautiful for us because we had that space. We have that space still have it now we have the opportunity to own it um but we must raise the money the the 54,000 that's left over about 55 54,000 um left over to raise in order to purchase the property um because it is it uh, we just have the opportunity to do so and we have to do that by mid January and so I am asking again if you have any kind of love and support for your girl for me, for the ministry, for green spaces in our communities, for um, natural and organic food for our community, then go over to the link in bio and give to the GoFundMe campaign. All amounts help. <laughs> so you ain't got to feel like you got to hop on there and give a thousand. I'll take a G, <laughs> you know, but 
$10, $20, $50, $100, you know, whatever it is that you can give, please go over there and give, you know what I mean? We can, I can only do, you know, right now, you know, I'm doing everything that I have been able to do and I'm giving thanks to be able to maintain the property, to be able to link up with different partners that has been helping. I have a, I want to shout out to, um, one of my investment, the investors and partners, Kamikaze Elite Club, one of the OU members, they really kicked, stepped up and kicked in an investment and we are partnering. They are our events partner. And so they're the ones who uh, will be doing some beautiful events next year, bringing music out to the garden. They're building out the outdoor event space, which is going to be an outdoor, full outdoor bar kitchenette area, seating area, a formal um, uh, bonfire area, a VIP space, a stage with a dance floor. All of that is be being built out in the garden. So I'm giving thanks for them. That has already started. Some of you all who are in Atlanta, who are in Atlanta, have seen some of the enhancement we've already been able to do since we took over in August. Um, but we still need to fully secure the place. Okay. And so with this goal, you know, my goal was to thank God we was able to acquire the place, but I don't know about y'all. Um, but I believe in total ownership. And so that's what we're reaching for total clear, clean and clear ownership of the property. And we are very close to our goal of having that. And so I'm asking you to please do, uh, contribute where you can, where you can. All right, so uh, I just been chit chatting away. I guess I can take Q and A. Y'all want to vibe out on something? Y'all can throw a question out to me about uh, anything. We can talk about um, this winter solstice coming up. Um, we got a lot of things happening, and and with cosmic energy right now, um, <laughs> a lot. Um, you know, I don't know. Go for it. You can throw some questions out. I'm willing to take that. I said, I'm going to just hop on and kind of chit chat about what I got going on in my world. Um, I shared what book I'm reading right now. I shared what um, I'm working on as far as the wellness of my physical body, which was the lymphatic system. I'm doing some focused attention on my lymphatic system right now. So I'm doing a lot of different exercises that help with that. I have a tincture and a tea that I'm indulging in that helps with the lymphatic system. And um, I'm also just... I'm also uh, intentionally sweating more, you know, just doing more sweats, going to the sauna. I'm um, considering going down to a sweat lodge in Alabama on Sunday. So, you know, just making sure the lymphatic system is healthy, you know, get to learn about your lymphatic system because it is very important for us to keep it healthy, for us to keep it functioning, for us to detox it every now and then too. One thing that I did not mention about uh, lymphatic health is be careful with the products you're putting on your skin, which is your largest organ, okay? Because a lot of this deodorant that people are using, what is deodorant called, y'all? Regular deodorant. What is regular deodorant called? It's or what, what they usually sell in the store. Antiprespirant. I think that's how they say it. Antiprespirant. Is anti meaning against? Don't you know? Stop <laughs> perspiring. So it's it's if it's making you not sweat. What do you think is happening? That's not the greatest thing. You know what I mean? So first of all, if you're sweating a lot and you feel like you have to wear some chemically um, created deodorant to stop you from sweating so much. That profuse sweating, especially if it's a color, like you see yellow under your arm or green under your arm, that is showing you something, okay? So uh, a person who is fairly healthy and the body is uh, pretty alkaline, you know, you're fairly healthy, you're not going to necessarily experience a whole lot of sweating under your arm, especially when you stop using those chemically de chemical deodorants and you start using natural deodorants. I personally, for the last over 10 years, have used a salt stick. So I just use sea salt under my arm. It's a salt stick. The brand, I think it's called Crystal Clear or something like that. 
It's literally just a stick of sea salt. <laughs> you wet it a little bit and then you just wipe it under your arm all the way around your arm like this. I've been using that for over 10 years. Once you start using those type of things, it's going to change the way your body reacts. And so you're not going to be sweating as much. You're definitely not going to smell. You're going to smell much better. Another way that I keep from like having body odor and having to worry about putting on anything to keep my body odor down or sweating is I indulge in chlorophyll. So natural chlorophyll from the fresh pressed juice I drink, but also you can get liquid chlorophyll. There's also like um, different tablets you can take for chlorophyll, but that is a natural body deodorizer. So you won't have to feel like you got to put on all this chemically chemical filled deodorant to try not to smell bad but you do have to stop using it let your body detox and let your body kind of calibrate a bit so you won't be such a heavy sweater and uh, smell i mentioned that because deodorants and different kind of i'm not sure i understand you want nobody talking to you siri deodorants and different <laughs> different like body washes and and lotions and things are not good for the body you're putting it on your largest organ. It's going straight into your system. It's going into your blood. It's all of that. So not good, not good, not good. So try your best to convert over to natural products as much as possible. Um, at this point, I don't use anything with chemicals on my body. My soap is made with tea tree, um, tea tree charcoal, tea tree and charcoal and natural, I forget what it's called, that creates the soap. Um, um, but black soap. So black soap, tea tree, and charcoal. That's my soap. The the moisturizer I use on my skin is coconut oil. If it's not coconut oil, it's some kind of shea butter mix. Or I sometimes get my herb lady to put together um, a, a um, herbal oil for me. Just depends. Sometimes in the winter time, I need a different type of oil besides coconut oil. For toothpaste, I use a natural toothpaste that's fluoride-free that's uh, made with charcoal uh, and some other herbs. For the deodorant, I use the salt stick. For the hair, I use a natural oil with herbs in it. For the shampoo, um, I've used okra uh, shampoo. I've used um, just, it's different natural shampoos that you can create, but my also my loctician use um, chemical free shampoo so you know just thinking about that when you're in ingesting or putting something on your body you're putting things into your organs on the inside and when you put it on your body you're putting things on the body you know in your organ in the largest organ of your body and so your lymph system is going to try to detox those things and if they're clogged or if they're not healthy, then they're not going to be able to detox it. I was led to focus on the lymph system because I've dealt with small little cysts since like middle school was the first time I noticed like little small little cysts. And I learned what cysts are and how can I, you know, um, decrease those if not rid, rid them. And so... The main thing is just to make sure you're putting stuff into your body that is healthy for you and also detoxing. That's the main, I mean, that's really how to live well. Move your body, put healthy things in the body, make sure the body is releasing. That's the main, if you want to just keep it short and simple, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, make sure you're moving your body. Make sure you're doing your very best to put good foods in your body, good drinks in your body, living foods specifically. You know, look at your look at your week. How many living foods have you incorporated in the week? Put in some more living foods. Do your best to put in more living foods. Um, and then make sure your body is releasing. Like yesterday, I had a colonic. I don't love them. I ain't gonna lie to you. I have to like, me and the colonic machine have to, we just have our whole little vibe before I get started. Like, look, we're going to have a good experience. We're going to detox. <laughs> like, let this process be easy. Thank you, inventor of the colonic machine, you know, so I won't be just mad about it because I don't love it, but I try to at least do one colonic per uh, quarter to make sure I'm cleaning out because the, the, colon and intestine system like it's mad long and it's crunched up in our body 
And I don't, and that little poop that you do, that, 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 you know, that ain't necessarily sufficing, you know, unless your digestive system is absolutely on point, which kudos to you. That's what's up. Um, but in the Western world, um, for the most part, we do want to focus a little bit on our gut health because, um, a lot of the foods we were reared on, we was raised on, created things like leaky gut and, you know, all these different things in our bodies. And it just is what it is. Thank God the body regenerates and you can correct it. You know, you can help it to correct itself. But we still, even the, the healthiest of us, you know, we indulge in things that um, are not the greatest for us. Our uh, environment have things in it that's not the greatest for us. And so it is good for us to make some efforts to detox. Okay. And just think about it, y'all. Detoxes is not just getting a good poop in, all right? <laughs> Colonic is great, but the blood, you know, um, could use some detoxin. Your lungs could use some detoxin. You know, um, your mind, <laughs> you know, your mind could use some detoxin. The skin, you know, by going to a sauna, you know, um, doing a sweat and then washing the body with something that's edifying to the body and then moisturizing it up while it's still damp. All of that is great for the temple. And this is God's temple. Like, have you ever been to a beautiful temple before? A beautiful temple? Like a really nice, nice temple? If not, I really have given this assignment to my members. Like, go visit some beautiful temples and then liken it to your body. Like, this is the temple of God. You know, I grew up in a church and in my little church, they didn't play about the, the sanctuary. You know what I mean? They, you couldn't go in there with no drinks, no, you not even water, no gum, no nothing. And you, and you got it and you need to walk step lightly. You know, ain't no running, ain't no doing, you know, unless you got filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but other than that, ain't no, you know, step lightly, you know, it's the sanctuary. And so this is your temple, you know, this is your temple, temple. Temple. This is your sanctuary, your mind, your heart. All of that is the sanctuary, the temple of God. So, doing the best we can to take care of it is is a powerful thing. Peace, y'all. Peace. Who I still got on here? Just want to say hey to y'all. Um, want to say again, if you have ever, ever, ever been impacted, um, have experienced any type of goodness from myself or OU Ministries, or you've ever visited the garden and you've had a good time, you've ever enjoyed any events that I have put on, please, please, please show your love and support to the GoFundMe that I have at the link in bio. I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to purchase the land that I'm currently on and functioning out of. Um, but we need to make a move and get this thing done by mid-January. And so uh, we are very close to our goal. We're about $54,000, $55,000 away um, from having this property, a uh, staple uh, to continue to be a staple in the community. It's been there for over 17 years, cultivated as a green space and a garden. And we have the opportunity to make sure it stays. And if you're in Atlanta area, this is going to be a place where you can just imagine having your family reunions, birthday parties, all this in a beautiful botanical garden. Just imagine having your wind down Wednesdays and your your uh, wellness retreats and sun gazing and all type of beautiful stuff in a beautiful botanical garden owned by us, operated by us, maintained by us. That's what we have the opportunity to secure uh, right now, you know, and God has has provided this opportunity, has put it in my hands. And um, so I'm attempting to be a good steward of that opportunity. And one of the things that I have been led to do is to say, hey, y'all, excuse me, need a little support here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> need a little support here. So very close to our goal. Very, very close to our goal. We've come a long way, um, but we are right at the end part of this uh, uh, raising the funds to totally to be com to be full owners of the property. OK, um, it's one thing to be able to acquire the property or close on the property. It's another thing to obtain attain full ownership. And that's what we're going for. That's what we are close to doing, attaining full ownership of the property. And so um, please, please, please show your support. That link is in the bio. All right, y'all. So it's, it's uh, dinner time and wind down time for me. 
Thank you for joining me. Um, I am this week. I'll be going live during the Mars hour every day. Um, so if you enjoyed this at all, I would love to hear from you if you enjoyed this. And um, also, uh, if you think someone else would enjoy this, please do share it. I'm going to share it on my YouTube channel um, here on IG. If you have not yet checked out my YouTube channel, please go over there and do that. I think you'll find something that's profound and helpful on your journey. Um, uh, am I missing anything? And um, oh, just stay tuned for the times that I will be going live. I'll let you all know. Uh, right now, my goal is to go live during the Mars hours. And so uh, you all will see it. I'm going to post the times every day that I'll be going live. So hop on. I'll just be talking about what I got going on. I always got something to talk about. I'm always contemplating something. I'm always praying on something. I'm always vibing on something. I'm always doing something. So, you know, I'll be just talking about different topics of wellness and different books I'm reading and what I read. You know, I may be inspired to do a meditation or I don't know. I'm just vibe out, just vibe out. And so I would love for y'all to vibe out with me. All right. Peace and love y'all. Enjoy the rest of your day.